Welcome to today's vlog. I've got to admit that there is uh, an element of sadness in my heart today as I share this vlog. I'm just sharing what's on my heart and it has to do with my relationship with the British Methodist Church. I owe so much to the Methodist Church in this country. I was uh, born into the Methodist Church really. My family uh, my elder, four elder sisters, my mum and dad, went regularly to the Methodist chapel in the village where we lived, where I was born. And so that was part of my upbringing. And I loved going to church. I really enjoyed it. I was loved there. I was cared for by the folk of the church. I was nurtured in the Christian faith. Uh, so from day one, I've been part of the Methodist church family. At the age of five, after a particular service at church, I came home, knelt down on the stairs at, at home and uh, invited Jesus into my life, into my heart and gave my life to him. And so from that time, there's been uh, that uh, constant sense of his presence. Well, sometimes I haven't felt close to God, but I've known really in my heart of hearts that he's been with me all that time. And I've grown to love Jesus, to know him more, though there is so much more to explore, of course. Um, I've got here, in fact, I've got some Bibles that uh, mark the steps along the route of my Christian journey. Here's a Bible that was given to me when I was about 10 uh, from uh, the Sunday school where I belonged in that chapel. Uh, and so many fond memories of those early days. And uh, so I grew up in the Methodist Church, was part of the Methodist Church. And then uh, surprisingly, in some ways, God called me to the ministry of preaching. Uh, I'm naturally quite a shy person, not uh, wanting to be up front, in, standing in front of people. But uh, God called me. He, God uh, works in mysterious ways. And here is the Bible that was uh, presented to me when I became what's called the fully accredited local preacher within the, or lay preacher within the, Methodist Church known as local preachers. So that's part of my experience and then uh, lo and behold uh, God in his uh, wisdom which I don't quite understand called me into the ordained ministry uh, as a, a presbyter as, as it's called our minister within the Methodist Church and here's the Bible that I was presented when I was ordained back in I think 1992, 30 years ago. Uh, so uh, it's been quite a journey and uh, I spent 30 years in the active Methodist ministry. Uh, so although we've on occasion over the years attended uh, different flavour of Christian churches, always I've known I've, I've felt part in some way of the Methodist uh, family. Although primarily I am a follower of Jesus. It's, Methodism doesn't define who I am, I am a follower of Christ. Uh, he is my Lord and my Saviour. I seek to serve him. Uh, so life in the Methodist Church and then a couple of years ago came to retirement. We moved back to Doncaster. Uh, I've been uh, a bit concerned about some of the direction that the British Methodist Church has been going in in recent times and particularly the Methodist Conference, which is the governing body, uh, their decision to uh, accept a report that recommended that the Methodist Church uh, changes its definition of marriage and includes marriage between people of the same gender. It seems to me that by doing that, Methodism has gone against 2,000 years of Christian teaching. It's gone against what I see as the biblical teaching and it's gone against the vast majority of the Christian church worldwide. But that's the, the course that the Methodist church chose to take. Not only that, but they seem to have um, elevated um, cohabitation almost to the same level as marriage. And perhaps the worst thing of that decision of that conference was to turn down the opportunity to reaffirm the uniqueness of Christ in being the only way through which we can obtain life in all its fullness. So a number of things I've been unhappy with, but I've uh, felt, I've not never felt in the times since then that I've been wrestling with the issue that God has said you need to leave the Methodist Church. He 
it's always said you stick around uh, until that is um it became well let me say this uh, i missed a step out there that uh, at the annual gathering of methodist ministers in this district there was ordained ministers were asked to reaffirm our commitment to methodist doctrine and because i believe that methodism has changed their doctrine on marriage and relationships i had to say no i don't any longer uh, conform to that don't agree with it and uh, so i kind of stepped out of line really and so i had a conversation with the chair of district which is the methodist roughly the methodist equivalent of a bishop and i was told that uh, on uh, there are certain conditions attached which i don't need to go into it but i could continue to preach in the methodist church uh, which i did and then it became apparent that um, in our local area the methodist local preachers the lay preachers had been told that unless they sow the line with this uh, new doctrine then they would no longer be able to preach in methodist churches so i as a, a minister was able to continue to preach in those of my lay colleagues who held the same view as me were not going to be able to continue preaching and i felt that was really in, unjust and i couldn't uh, stand by and do nothing and so i felt i had to uh, submit my resignation from the methodist church uh, sad though that was and so i had to go before in the methodist system the resignation advisory committee that's i had a zoom meeting with a number of people and had to talk about my decision and etc i was asked questions and uh, I, I kind of tried to establish where i stood and i also need to tell you that because i was resigning from the, the british methodist church i applied to become a clergy person within the what's known as the global methodist church which is a, a relatively newly formed um, denomination it's uh, based mainly at the moment in america though it's growing in other places around the world and it's a, a part of the Methodist Church worldwide, which has a particular focus on Christ, Christ at the centre, but also on the truths contained within the scriptures, the Bible. And so I felt very much at home and I was welcomed within, to, within the, uh, uh, the global Methodist Church. Uh, despite that fact, I was told at this resignation advisory committee that I would, because I was resigning from the British Methodist Church, I would no longer be uh, welcomed to take services to preach in the British Methodist Church. So uh, I felt very sad about that because it's always been the case, as far as I remember, that that uh, ministers, clergy of other Christian denominations uh, were welcome in Methodist Church to take service. But obviously, for some reason, even though I am a minister now in the global Methodist Church, I'm not welcome in British Methodist churches and uh, I found that quite ironic because in recent months Sue and I have been attending our local Anglican church and we've been embraced made so welcome by the vicar Tom and the members of the church and indeed uh, Sue and I have got involved we lead a home group uh, we're involved in a newly established uh, school uh, cafe church uh, after school and uh, I've been uh, invited to preach in the church so there I am welcomed and embraced by our local Anglican church and yet the Methodist church in Great Britain is saying no we don't want you anymore uh, you can't preach in our churches which I found very very sad so that's uh, where I am um, how am I feeling well uh, the first uh, overwhelming sense of, of relief was the feeling that I felt that at last, you know, a decision's been made. I've faced this committee, uh, we're going forward. Uh, so there is a sense of relief in some ways, but also a great, great sense of sadness, almost a bereavement really, that this Methodist church in the UK, this family that I've belonged to for 67 years of my life, I'm no longer part of anymore and it, almost as if I've stepped out and the door's been closed so there is a, a depth of sadness um, 
I'm not feeling bitter. I'm not angry. I just feel desperately, desperately sad that it's come to this. But uh, I am full of hope for the future. Uh, I'm so grateful to God that he led us to our local Anglican church where we are now part of that church family. I'm, I'm grateful that I'm part of the global Methodist church because Methodism has such a rich history that I'm, I'm proud of. Um, John, the, the Wesley brothers, uh, Whitfield, others who were filled by the Spirit, inspired by God and to preach the gospel, to transform the nation. And that great uh, evangelical re uh, revival of the 18th century that uh, still has effects today that Methodism reached around the world. Uh, and in many places around the world, Methodism is alive and active and growing. Uh, I do fear for the British Methodist Church as things are. Um, so I'm not bitter in any way. I'm really desperately sad. I do feel a great sense of loss, but I'm hopeful for the future. I'm grateful that God is with me, that Jesus is my saviour. Uh, and I want to continue in whatever way I can to proclaim that gospel of good news that the world desperately needs.